Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for reaching out to our presentation. My name is Maya Tlumic, and today I'm going to present you our work titled On the Stability of the Soft Pendulum with Affine Curvature, Open Loop, Collocated Closed Loop, and Switching Control. This work is done in collaboration with Cosmo de la Santina from Technical University of Delft, Kosto Jovanovic from the University of Belgrade, and Adriano Fagiolini from the University of Palermo. Talking about robots, we can look at them from the perspective of dimensionality. So starting from the inverted pendulum that has a single degree of freedom over robotic arms that have several degrees of freedom and uh, hip redundant robots with uh, countably many degrees of freedom, we reach a continuum soft robots that have a uh, theoretically infinite dimensionality. So the embedded elasticity uh, within uh, soft robots equips them with a fantastic manipulation and locomotion capabilities. Therefore, you can see here some soft robot that can grow like a plant, that can move in constrained spaces, that can grasp different objects, swim like an octopus, and uh, move like a snake or like a worm. So, uh, where is the grand challenge in uh, soft robotics? Basically, it is uh, within uh, the question of how to control soft robots. Here, you can see a general dynamic equation of uh, one uh, soft robot. And if you look uh, separately at uh, the terms that compose such uh, dynamics, you can see that uh, this system is basically highly nonlinear. Moreover, it is also inherently underactuated. Here, uh, you can see the kinematics of one pretty simple soft robot that we were going to consider today. And you see that uh, the amount of nonlinearities, even for this uh, simple system, is uh, quite amazing. Regarding the underactuation, there have been different approaches so to control a soft robot. Um, one approach is to use a model free control, such as machine learning and empirical methods. Then uh, one can assume artificially that uh, soft robots are fully actuated and uh, then apply model based feed forward control or feedback control. Another solution is to linearize the soft robot and there uh, consider that we have a linear underactuated system and then apply LPV framework or can scheduling control. Or, um, assume that the system is non-linear underactuated, and then use energy shaping control and PD poly control. In our work, uh, we follow the approach where the parallel is made between uh, rigid robots and uh, soft robots. So in this slide, you can see some template models of uh, uh, famous underactuated systems that uh, even though they were simple, they were quite important to understand how to control underactuated rigid systems. So here we have cart pendulum, furuta pendulum, pentobot, and acrobot. And in this paper, we consider a soft inverted pendulum that is basically a soft counterpart of acrobot. Uh, therefore, uh, similarly to these uh, previous models, our soft inverted pendulum has two degrees of freedom and one degree of actuation. So let us now see what they are. So one degree of freedom is the tip orientation and another degree of uh, of freedom is the average orientation of pendulum segments, while uh, the actuation is basically the torque that acts at the tip of the robot. The aim of our paper is to provide a guideline for soft robot design. Uh, basically, we want to investigate uh, how physical parameters of a robot uh, affect uh, potential energy shape and uh, pattern stability of equilibrium points. Uh, then we examine the stability of collocated uh, zero dynamics of such underactuated system. And uh, finally, we propose a switching control strategy. So let us now delve deeper into the soft inverted pendulum model. Uh, we have here two configuration variables that are Q0, tip orientation, Q1, average orientation. This soft pendulum has an affine curvature, which means that it is an affine function of a local coordinate S. S is a local and normalized coordinate that goes from 0 to 1, and it denotes where we are along the pendulum's central axis. Then we have another local coordinate, D, that determines where we are along the width of the pendulum. So we have one soft pendulum uh, whose length is L and whose width is D. Uh, for some point SD on this pendulum, we can define local stiffness, K star, and local mass, M star. In uh, this paper, we consider a local mass that is uh, quite general, and uh, it encompasses uh, the cases when uh, the mass is uniformly distributed along the soft robot body, and also uh, the cases when we have a kappa lumped masses along the central axis. 
The total mass and total stiffness uh, can be obtained by integrating local stiffness and mass uh, along the local coordinates. Here uh, we see a uh, uh, dynamics of this soft pendulum written in the in Hamiltonian form with uh, separated actuated and unactuated parts. So our collocated variable uh, is uh, Q0. It means that it is directly actuated by the input torque tau, while the non-collocated variable is Q1. For more details about uh, the derivation of uh, this dynamic model, I advise you to check the recent paper of uh, Cosmo. And uh, for now on, uh, let us uh, focus on the particularities of uh, this soft inverted pendulum. Well, the first uh, interesting thing lays in the shape of its potential energy. So the total potential energy is made of gravity and elastic potential energy terms. And we first show that uh, each term uh, can be conveniently factorized such that uh, robot physical parameters are extracted from the rest of the expression. So here that we have that the gravity potential energy has uh, MGL extracted and uh, elastic potential energy has uh, stiffness K extracted. Now uh, let us consider a robot that can um, have, uh, let's say, various uh, length. And uh, for example, like uh, this robot uh, here that you can see in the video that can grow. And then let's observe how different length affects the uh, shape of the potential energy. Basically, we can see two phenomena. First one is that uh, as L increases, uh, new local minima appear that are separated from each other by, like this one, uh, they're, they're separated by each other with uh, hill shaped barriers. Another observation is that some local minima can eventually turn into local maxima. The second particularity of these soft robots lies in the equilibrium pattern and uh, its local stability. So here uh, you have extracted equilibrium conditions of this uh, soft pendulum, and here you can see the expression of a gravity vector. When we substitute gravity vector inside uh, this set of equations, we get uh, these conveniently expressed equilibrium conditions. And uh, they are convenient for us because we can define the parameter gamma. So gamma is a term that comprises uh, robot parameters like uh, stiffness, mass, and the length. And intuitively, you can see that the smaller gamma basically describes a robot that is uh, thinner, more elastic, while a larger gamma means that uh, our robot is uh, heavier, it is more compact, and it is stiffer. The stability of equilibrium points that are obtained by solving this uh, set of equations uh, can be examined by using Sylvester's criterion. So basically, uh, we can we can calculate whether this uh, total stiffness matrix kappa is positive definite, and if it is, then we can conclude that the equilibrium is a stable one. And uh, here we come uh, to the uh, numerical analysis of this system. So if we uh, take different values of gamma and we calculate the number of equilibria and the stability of uh, this equilibria, we can uh, observe three things. Uh, first one is that the number of equilibria increases as gamma decreases. Then the second one is that once a stable equilibrium can, for a smaller value of gamma, become unstable. However, in that case, uh, uh, two stable equilibria appear in the vicinity of this unstable equilibria, which um, implies that our system is a safe system. Then the third observation is that a stable equilibria exists even for small gamma. Okay, so far uh, we've just been involved into the equations and numerics, but let us see uh, what uh, physically it means to have a different gamma. So here for gamma equals to one, it means that we have one equilibrium that is stable. So basically pendulum is able to sustain itself in the upright position. Then for some smaller gamma like 0 0.25, our pendulum can fall on one or to another side. For some gamma that is quite small, like 0 0.01, we have a pendulum that is so thin and elastic that basically it can swirl around uh, the base, and then we get a new set of equilibrium points. Okay, let us now consider the case uh, when uh, we also have some non-zero input torque, so tau bar is different from zero, and uh, gamma is constant and equal to 0 0.01. When we calculate the number of equilibria, we can notice uh, that for larger values of uh, tau bar, uh, the number of equilibrium points uh, reduces to a single one. And uh, let us see what it means in the Cartesian shape. Basically, it means that uh, we can take our pendulum 
and uh, by applying a higher torque, we basically swirl it around the base until it uh, gets some uh, circular shape like this one, or like uh, this snake, uh, which embraces this poor guy. Okay, so uh, let us now talk about the closed loop control. Uh, here we will examine the collocated control and uh, starting from our uh, well-known uh, dynamics that is separated into actuated and unactuated part. Uh, the aim of our control is to regulate tip orientation to some Q0 bar. To achieve that, we will use some feedback load tau that is uh, provided here. And uh, we will assume that the system output is equal to Q0 minus Q0 bar. So by finding higher derivatives of Y, we can conclude that the relative degree of the system is equal to 2 and the system dimension is equal to 4. Uh, that means that clearly we have one underactuated system. The zero dynamics equation is obtained by zeroing the output and its higher derivatives, and you can see it here. At this point, I would like uh, to recall the theorem uh, from the work of Spong that says that uh, if you want to analyze the stability of the overall underactuated system, basically we can separate it to the analysis of the collocated part and the analysis of zero dynamic stability. And uh, here we will assume that our collocated control strategy uh, gives us a stable collocated part of the system. Therefore, the stability of the overall system depends on zero dynamic stability. So in the next slides, we will examine exactly the zero dynamic stability. As a first step, uh, we can focus on the zero dynamics equilibrium conditions that are provided right here in this equation. And uh, then we can recall Lagrange Dirichlet's theorem that states that the local minima of the system's potential energy are Lyapun of a stable equilibrium. This theorem has inspired us uh, to consider potential energy function that is provided here. And uh, basically, if we find its uh, first derivative, uh, we can see that uh, it is exactly the same as zero dynamics equilibria conditions, which means that the equilibria of zero dynamics are exactly the uh, extreme points of potential energy function. Then to be sure that these extreme points are actually minimum uh, of the system's potential energy, uh, we consider and we calculate uh, second derivative of the potential energy. And uh, uh, we state that the condition to be minima is actually that the second derivative is uh, greater than zero, uh, which is uh, uh, replicated in, uh, reflected in this uh, uh, condition. So basically uh, for the region that is painted here in a green color, uh, this condition is uh, satisfied and all equilibria that are found within this region are stable equilibria. Similar analysis can be uh, done for um, unstable equilibria. So basically, if we just assume that our second derivative is uh, less than zero, we obtain this condition. And this basically means that uh, our equilibria uh, will be uh, the maxima of a potential energy function. And uh, this region takes uh, this red colored uh, part of the chart. Uh, moreover, we can also find the condition when we have a satisfied uh, global stability. So in this case, uh, we need to have a second derivative that is greater than zero for all Q1. And uh, it is reflected in this uh, condition uh, written here. So basically in this region painted in a darker green color. Uh, now let us see uh, where are the equilibrium points of uh, zero dynamics. Uh, here we can uh, rewrite zero dynamics um, uh, equilibrium uh, condition in a convenient way, which allows us to analyze uh, equilibrium for different values of a gamma. And uh, first, uh, let us assume that gamma takes some intermediate value between zero and infinity. Then this condition can be rewritten in this form, and uh, we can basically plot uh, this uh, right-hand sign function in this graph and observe one interesting thing. And that is uh, that we can basically, for different gamma, let's say gamma equals to 0.05, we can draw a horizontal line and then uh, the intersection of this horizontal line with this function basically uh, tells us how many equilibrium points we have. In this case, we have three equilibrium points and this can also be observed in this uh, Cartesian uh, graph. And then let us look at some extreme points where gamma is equal to zero. Uh, then equilibrium condition is um, uh, basically that uh, gamma two is equal to zero and we have this uh, uh, we can find equilibrium in, in the intersection of a zero plane with a gamma two function. Uh, so basically we can see that for some small values of gamma like 0 0.005, uh, we have many equilibria and uh, you can see that we have here like seven equilibria. Uh, then another extreme point is when uh, gamma tends to infinity. 
In that case, uh, this term uh, disappears and we have uh, just a single equilibrium uh, that is uh, uh, Q1 bar equals to one half of Q0 bar. So one of the main contributions of this paper uh, is basically made by collecting all these regions and overlapping, uh, collecting them on one graph and overlapping them with uh, the function that presents equilibrium points. And in this case, you can see that when gamma is equal to 0 0.05, if you draw this horizontal line, it is not only that you will find how many equilibrium you have, but you will also uh, have a clear idea about their stability. And uh, you can see it here on this uh, graph that uh, here we first run into some uh, Q1 bar equal to minus 1.46, it's stable one, then Q1 bar is equal to zero, it's unstable clearly, and then another one stable for Q1 bar equals to 1.46. And similarly for even smaller gamma equals to 0 0.05. So you have here, uh, again, if you draw a horizontal line, you can obtain information about uh, pattern and stability. Similar charts can be made for different values of uh, Q0 bar. So we have uh, here one example for Q0 bar equals to uh, two pi. So if you draw a line at 0 0.05, we obtain just a single stable equilibrium. And also we can uh, obtain similar thing for Q1, Q0 bar equal to one. Uh, where if you draw a horizontal line, we have one, um, yeah, one two stable equilibria and one unstable. And here we also present the case when the gamma changes from uh, 0 0.1, so from here up to uh, gamma equal to 4. So we see that the shape of the equilibrium basically depends on, uh, on gamma, but it remains stable all the time. Uh, finally, I would like uh, to talk about the energy injection switching control, which we proposed in this paper. So the motivation is the following. We have some pendulum uh, whose gamma is 0 0.05 and uh, whose collocated variable is regulated to zero. And uh, that pendulum from some initial position falls into one stable equilibrium. However, we are not happy because we would like our pendulum to go to another side. Uh, how can we do it? Uh, basically, we draw the inspiration from the work of Spong and we inject the additional energy in the system in order to be able to swing the pendulum and to move it to another side. A bit more complex case is uh, for this gamma equal to 0 0.005, uh, where we start uh, from, so the pendulum initially falls into this equilibrium Q1 bar equals to minus 2.4, but we would like it to reach this one, minus 6.1. So here we first need to sweep the pendulum around the base, and then we regulate it to uh, Q1 bar equal to minus 6.1. So uh, that was all. Uh, thank you for your attention. I am looking forward to uh, discussing these results with you.